Okay, I'm Tom Thompson, and Bruce Wilson is here hiding out. There Hi. he is. <laughs> and uh, our third partner in this was Thomas Hatley, who's a, the programmer, the uh, brains behind the coding. So um, years ago in Oregon, it's required that all animal operations that can find in a li liquid facilities need to have a nutrient management plan. So this is kind of the third iteration of that. The f first one was literally a basic, like basic language pro program that you had to step through to get information. Second one was an Excel spreadsheet, which had all kinds of problems with uh, m Microsoft issues. And then we hit upon this uh, pro programmer who said, well, why don't we just do it on the Internet? So we um, thought that was a grand idea. And so... That this is what came of it, and the next, the next, so that this is the opening screen. What it looked like, we'll get to that. So, we got some money from a CIG grant from the NRCS, and that was supplemented by Oregon Department of Ag funds and Marion County and Tillamook Soil and Water Districts, and um, the Oregon Dairy Farmers Association hosts this program. And it also has been uh, vet vetted and built with the approval of the Department of Ag, so it meets their specs on what they'd like to see in a plan. And the Tillamook the, the district, which has a lot of dairy farms in it because of the cheese factory there, they're one of the primary users of it as well as uh, people around the state. And, and se secondarily on that, uh, the farms that receive manure probably going to have to have a plan as well. So we've modified this a little bit instead of being an animal plan to be a, 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 a just a true nutrient management plan. So, so far we've spent a whole bunch of money and a whole bunch of hours building this. So we'll see how that goes. So, so this, this is the, um, the opening screen you come to would be the welcome screen. And when you get into it, yeah, there we go. So when you first get into it, there's a welcome screen that just says, hi, here's what this is. It's not a predictive tool to predict what's going to happen. It's just taking the the information that you have about your facility, putting it into a computer so you have estimates up front, and then on the outside, it'll give you some information, which is generally the uh, nutrient management plan report that you can turn in. So it starts off with the um, name, rank, serial number information. So operator, owners and operators, the number of animals, make this a little bit, can't find the uh, make bigger button, full screen, I'll just stretch it out. But um, so here you put in the type of animals you have, it's, it's a drop down menu. Let me go over here. So th throughout it, there's three things. There's add new something, add new fields, add new animals with this button. The garbage can gets rid of stuff, and the little pen allows you to e edit things. So for, uh, well, we can't once we've chosen animals. So you can, uh, oh, God, now I'm really into it here. Oh, there we go. So you can edit a lot of the inputs with drop-down menus. So this says how many animals, and th these two are kind of important because here's the permitted amount of animals you have based on what you were granted by the state. Department of Agriculture, and here's how many animals you have. So you might be permitted for a lot of animals, but not have that many. And here's their average weight, the amount of days they're on the farm. And th this is the estimated manure pr pr production from the uh, American Society of Ag Engineers. So it's an estimate. And then it says, does the math on that and says, okay, here's how much manure is estimated to be produced by those amount of animals. Then in the storage tab, you type in whatever descriptor you want for the storage, tank, solids, whatever, uh, the size of it, and it'll do the computations as the volume, whether it's cover covered or not, and then it'll compute the surface area as well. So all, all, all your storage is, is uh, uh, put in there. And then this tab gets a little bit detailed. Uh, I think it's, what, 2024? Yeah. So this takes all the numbers from your storage that you told it, and uh, it has the um, days of the month, and it says, okay, I have um, a solids removal factor, like uh, she was talking about earlier, what percentage of solids are gonna be removed from 
the, the liquid wa waste stream. Uh, and then the bet betting, how much betting you buy that bring comes into the farm. And then if you use some of this sol solids here, uh, it's recycled back onto the farm for betting, like in a compost or that you can put that in there and whether or not you import solids, which comes from another tab. So then it computes for that month how much solids is estimated you'll need to store. And uh, this is just, just a cumulative. So ideally, these two numbers should match up. And then from that, it computes about how many days of storage you have ba based on the volume you've told it. And there's a similar, similar, uh, not very good with mouse, a, si a, a, si a similar one for the uh, li liquid manure. So after you've separated the solids, th this takes the liquid, ha has, this is, calculated for Oregon by the county or and where where the weather station is so the average rainfall evap evaporation and then um, so this takes the manure uh, process water from the parlors or wherever else you're using water that isn't directly from the animals and whether or not you in import any liquids to your and and this uh, can mean that would go on the fields or in a tank or whatever and then it does the computations again and comes up with how many days of storage you have then the next tab is what type of equipment you have to to apply that with and this is farmer oriented so one, once you put in that your uh, solid spreader will hold 186 cubic feet then when you do your nutrient applications you only have to say i did three loads and it'll compute the uh what that application rate was and here we have a hundred foot the bu bu buffer setback for a wet and dry environment so that you're not getting too close to open water and then feed fields you can call fields whatever you wish to uh, by number by name or you can put a descriptor in so they know that number one is the uh the dairy field or whatever and then uh the so soils information is here, and that uh, varies by county, but based on the NRCS soils information. And that's pretty much the name rank serial number stuff. And then ap after you get that in there, so you've created fields, now you've got to grow something in those fields. So again, here you have a field, and it, you've told it the acres of that field, and then you can choose what's growing in that field from a drop-down menu, which covers anything that would be grown in Oregon, because this is right now is very Oregon-centric. Then what, what you're up front, you can put in what your estimated yield is and then what the moisture content. And again, these are all the book values for, for that selected crop. You can change the book values if you have a test on, on them, or you can leave them as they, they are. And you can do, at the end of the year, you can do one line for all of them, just accumulate them, or you can do the date of entry. So you could have three entries for field one and the various tonnage that accumulate for that. Uh, then after you get that in, you, what you might want to do is say, well, what are my manure tests? So I've taken tests from my tanks and solid stack and all that. You can put them in there, and that'll be used to calculate the uh, the amount of NPK applied to the soils, then there's a place for your so soil test, and you can have all the details of the soil test in there. Most important one is the phosphorus number because that's used in computation of the phosphorus index, which we'll get into a little bit later. So now you've got the ba basics of your farm, dairy, whatever, outlined, and um, it also has a grazing tab, which I won't go into great deal, but it says I'm going to put so many animals on that field for so many days. And then in this column, it estimates how much feed those animals will need based on the 3% three, 3 of dry matter on a body weight basis. But as you know, in August versus January, that number may not be achievable. So then you would put in the estimated amount of what they actually ate out there. And then the computer will calculate what the net removal was. It also accounts for the manure that they deposited in that field while they were out there. And um, this tab, the nutrient applications tab, is where you can keep a record of what you did. So on a certain day, I took manure from a certain source and put it in a field with this tool at this rate. And what, once you put 
the radian, then it'll calculate the NPK applied for that particular application. It has a transfers tab that says, okay, I, you put in there, I'm going to take manure to or take manure from Joe or Jones or grass seed field. That's, and then you can import from somebody or export to somebody. And that would be accounted for as well and all that. And what else we got? And then when you open it up after you've done this for a while, this is what the screen will open up to. So it says on field one, uh, the estimated need, nutrient need is 409 pounds of nitrogen, but you've only applied 282 pounds. So you're running a net deficit of 126 pounds. So it can kind of help you look to say where you may need a a additional new nutrients. And this turns pink when you've over applied. You go one pound over, it, it turns pink, but there is some allowance for that. Um, the other thing on nutrient applications that it does, it has a ability to um, the application source can be a um, commercial liquid or commercial solids. So if you put urea on, you can do 4600 and the amount of rate you put on in pounds per acre and it'll calculate the, uh, the synthetic manure application rate as well. And then that's the gist of the getting started. And the real advantage of it is, is this planning tab. Here is where you create the information for the plan. So you put in a narrative of who you are, what you're doing, how you run it, uh, what type of operation it is, you know, is it scrape? Just any, you don't want to paint yourself in a corner, but you want to give enough information where people can understand the plan. The O&M part is operation and maintenance is just, the boilerplate that's required and planned for safety and use. Maps is a little bit of a sticking point because you can get them from a lot of different sources. But once you do, there's the location map where it's the topographic map, the production area where the, the barns and tanks and everything are, and the field map and setbacks. And those will pop in as JPEGs. The soils report in Oregon that's required because it just says for the type of soil you have, it just has the NRCS and you can get this off the web soil survey. Uh, the phosphorus calcs, that is a mathematical tool that's used to estimate how much phosphorus loss you might have off the field. It takes into account the slope and the texture and rainfall and all these variables and management and puts in, calculates all these, how much sheet and real abose. So it's based on the soil type, the steepness of it, and how much manure you have and how much manure is residing still in the soil and comes up with a phosphorus index score. And that can be, depending on your state, the numbers may vary a little bit. And that says how uh, you might be doing for, and it's it currently it's not a regulatory tool, but coming soon to a theater near you. And then additional documents in Oregon, we have the NPDES, the National Pollution Discharge Elimination System Permit, which is the uh, EPAs. And then we have a state water pollution control facility uh, permit. So you just check this and it'll automatically include it. And then and any other type of documentation you wanna add. So after all that's done, you can create a report. So like the phosphorus index, you can click on that and it opens up and it'll show you for the which field, uh, the score and the rating of it. Uh oh, I'm stuck with the back button. So this Grab stuff. That bar. Grab it. Oh. Now I'm out of it. Oh, I think I screwed up. No, I didn't. Yeah, okay, we're good still. So um, on the reports, this uh, one, it takes a while to create, so I won't do it. This will create a, a report for a farm, which eliminates a lot of the animal-related information. This one will create a full CAFL report that in Oregon right now, it's pretty much 99% of what they would require for a, a, a CAFL permit. Then it has these, uh, like this one's easy to 
created. It's the we have to provide an annual report of how the manure went. I lost it. Oh, there it is. So this creates the takes the information from the plan and says, okay, for this current year, you've generated this much manure. And I, uh, the manure estimations are based on estimates. How many animals you got in that, and then the the liquids applied, solids applied. That's the real number. That's the number that you act actually had in hand to apply. So because of rainfall variance and other things, you may have less or more than what it's estimated you have. So this says you're permitted for this amount of animals. This is how many you had during the course of the year, how much liquids and solids you applied to the land, how much was done via grazing, whether you exported any solids, how many recycled for bedding, and how many acres you got to play with on that. So that... that um, we go down there and sneak in there. So that pretty much covers the gist of what it does. So, and th this is the worst case scenario. It says if all the animals, there's no accounting for evaporative losses, uh, no accounting for uh, uh, fumes, uh, no accounting. So it just takes, if you have these animals create this amount of manure and all the manure is put on all the acres evenly, um, then will you be able to balance or not? So that pretty much summarizes that up. You have anything to add? That's pretty much it.